James Nampushi is a long way from his native Kenya and his Maasai people. Here, the 29-year-old graduate student dances in full Maasai garb atop a hill on the campus of Clemson University in Clemson, South Carolina. James is sure he is a Clemson student not by chance, but by divine order. The Maasai warrior earned his stripes in this victory dance when he came face to face with a flesh-hungry lion. James killed the lion, but not before the animal sank its teeth into James. This is just one of many stories leading up to the so-called Lion Man's journey to Clemson. And according to this book of James, each chapter of his life is written by God. In, in 2008, a missionary from Greenfield came to Kenya. Uh, his name is Jimbo Barry. By then I was working as a tour guide in one of the tourism ecologists in Masai Mara in Kenya and I happened to be to, to assist him to carry his baggage. I told him I'm a Christian and he said I'm a Christian too <laughs> and then he asked me after I did I, I showed him everything in the room and now I was saying okay Jimbo this is gonna be your your home away from home for the next two days you are with us. So please feel free, enjoy your time, and make the best experience out of it. And in, in, in case you need something, I'm here for you. He said, come on, James, could I ask you a question? He said, yes, please go ahead. He said, what, what is your short-term plan? What do you want to do? Maybe after five years from now. I thought a little bit and then I, 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 I responded. Uh, my heart and my prayer and wish is that uh, I, I want to go back to school and do a master's degree. Dressed just like I am, but I had no my cow skin on like now. And he asked me, James, have you been to school? I said, yeah, I've been to school. Do you have a college certificate or a degree? I said, yes. <laughs> he asked me earlier that where do you want to go and do your master's? I said, if I could get one of the universities in the U.S. because their the, uh, education is good, I'll be grateful. He said, he said, do you know what? You know Clemson University? I said, what? What is Clemson? Come on. He said, no, Clemson University is one of the best U.S. public universities in the whole country, in, 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 in agriculture, parks, and recreation. And that is what your Maasai community needs to learn so that they could use you to come and teach them to grow crops because I, don't, I didn't see crops or food around here, only wildlife and cows. I said, yes, sir, that is it. And so he said, Clemson, you, you must come to Clemson. I said, for me, a village boy from, Mas from the Maasai, that will only be a dream. I have no money to come to Clemson. So, I, you, are you dreaming? That will be a dream to me. He said, come on, James. Listen, this is going to happen. I said, are you sure? Yes, he said, God is going to do it. <laughs> He said, okay. I said, God, you had him. So he said, come on, let's pray. We held hands in his, uh, in, the, in his room. And he said, God, I need James to come over to the U.S. to come to Clemson and do his master's. So when he gets his master's, he can come and help his community. I said, God, make this happen. And that is what happened. I always refer U.S. as the promised land flowing with milk and honey in the Bible. There is everything here. America is a blessed land. It is a, the Canaan in my own eyes. And this country is blessed. And God is really helping this country. So I do tell the youth, the future of this great nation, America, U.S., is in your hands. You can only 
make America sustain U.S. to be what it is if you work hard and you remain focused. Because the founding fathers of this nation worked and tirelessly hard to have what America is now. It's a leading democracy in the whole world. It's leading in technology, in development, in education, in every social and scientific aspect. U.S. is top. And my concern is for the youth of this nation is to work hard and remain focused to have this country better than it is now for the next generation or ages to come. I'm here in search of knowledge and skill. This is why I'm in America, to get the knowledge, to be able to develop communities, develop and support environmental uh, programs that will sustain our natural and cultural resources so that future generations could utilize them. We are not here forever. We are here on a temporary mission to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish and leave it for those we have developed to carry on. So I am in Clemson to, ha to have the fire. Then I'll go and put the fire on to others. In this country, there are so many things that are, being take that are taken for granted. The most leading in my life is water. In Africa, or in my country, in Kenya, in Maasai land, in my village, we have the natural hierarchical order of who takes water first. And the order is, we have the brown water that when it rains, that is when we get the water running. When nature says today we, you will be no more, we will be no more. Because if the rain fails to come, where do we get the water? We are not, I'm not even talking of clean water. I'm talking of brown water. That the elephants come, drink it on the water pool or on the river, pee on it, put their droppings on, come the rhinos, come the buffaloes, come the lions, come the zebras and the others and the, the, the giraffes, and then come cows, and now come the Maasai. Tell me how much that water will either be clean or dirty, and to what extent. We have no option. And my cry here is for us to be able to pray and get friends and organization to help us to have a water well for the Maasai. But when I came here in some of my classes, they said, oh, the sun is not good. Me, for me, I take this type of spring water. This one is good. When I look at them, I say, God, these people are crazy. They don't even drink the water bottle. I, I, I consume the tap water, you know, the running in the kitchen. Turn it on Here. and suck it, Here. sip it out. Here. To me, it's clean. Here. Coming soon, more from this book of James and the lion that nearly cost him his life, but instead made him a warrior, plus an interview with the man who helped open doors for James and perhaps other Maasai people.